Legislation aims to, to, to finance those farmers who are looking for resources uh, to finance farm inputs, things like hose, seeds, uh, pesticides, fertilizers. Uh, with all the uh, some analysis and found that there's little, uh, uh, there's little allocation for agro-processing uh, activities, activities that would have actually increased the value of the loan they are picking as compared to the regions. So with the increased production now in Northern Uganda, um, our request of course was that the people of Northern Uganda could consider to see how they can go into product processing. And uh, like I gave the example of oil seed processing and the, the value chain that come with it. Okay, so take for example, from the oil seeds, apart from getting cooking oil, and the time you can get cattle feed, you can get um, this poultry feed, and even feed for the bigger, right? So these are some of the, uh, you know, the activities that could be generated if we had significant good processing. Uh, it could actually support the rare pigs, the rare poultry, and cattle. And that would also go ahead to enhance the income from the people of North America, apart from increasing uh, the allocation that's coming from the ABC. So more agro processing and with the... And that is why his worship was saying that the government has to borrow from these other commercial banks because production is low. Production is very low, and we still need a lot to do in terms of mindset change, especially <laughs> when the progress message coming, that will be very much important. And try to see what happens, but processes have to be followed. So when we came here, we didn't have the account of those processes, so we cannot commit what has not been subject to the process. Well, that not to be as Uganda that the legislators made that law. When a law is made, we all ought to support it until otherwise. But so for now, we don't have another option but to abide by it since the president signed into law. Two examples for you to understand who a commercial bank is. First, the word commercial, the word commercial, commercial bank. Secondly, that the two most powerful people in this country, the president on record and the speaker of parliament, had financial problems and they called one of the banks that they wanted to borrow and they were denied. It is on record. The president of this country called and wanted to borrow. So if you want to borrow from the bank, establish what they call a bank customer relationship. So that when you go into the bank, they know you. They will not just say because you are an MP, you are the RCC. Political leadership, the commitment to do a corporate social responsibility in Ayago. Mr. Deputy Governor, we would like next time you speak to us, now I'm speaking as a politician, to also tell us the CSR in other places so that we can weigh so that we can weigh on a political scale what the Bank of Uganda is rewarding the people of Lauru are hardworking and perhaps some other people whom we know may not be doing as much as possible in business. We need to weigh that and we'll be happy if you do that for us. So I'm mentioning the institution of Bank of Uganda. So this commitment that has been overly emphasized by the chairman of the Chamber of Commerce, by his worship, the mayor, remains one big one in our minds. I cannot speak to it more than enough, but I would like you to follow it up so that you can give us an informed, if it was a political commitment, you inform us, then we shall explain to our people, say that was a political commitment, they said, no, we shall tell you. The key thing you're going to go back with Think around the corner that make this belief come true that you build a currency center in Nira City. When you go to open up an account, always ask for what they call a key fax document. It will give you the, the different types of accounts you can open up. If you, your interest is in opening up a savings account, 
look for a savings account that will give you the rate of interest that is favorable to you. But if you just walk in and, and throw money at the table and say, open an account for me, the bankers will give you an account that will give you interest because it has been better. Please tell them I want an account that pays that will pay me the highest rate of interest. People financial literacy strategy for the country, but it's also a national financial cultural strategy. The bank over time has been developed, able to develop the syllabus of financial literacy where we empower Ugandans to make the best use of their personal finances and discover issues like loans, telling me about loans, issues, all the details that you need to know about a loan, how to save money, how to invest, how to plan for old age, what to know for services that are offered by banks and other payment service providers. And this syllabus, we, we have trained people who are able to come out and help them impact knowledge on financial literacy across the whole country. And I will, challenge, I will not challenge I am very available to the lady that raised this question. Send my team to this little city. And my name is Makai Yomu. I'm the director in charge of national payment systems. Uh, so we are aware that the mobile money charges remain high. <coughs> but I'm going to take you through about three issues. The first one is within your control. The first one is indeed within your control. The deputy governor has never to say, let's keep the money within the mobile ecosystem. If you sold the boat and you know you're going to pay school fees or pay for water or pay for electricity, why do you want to get that money out? Because when you get it out, then you face first the withdrawal fees. Second, the 0.5% tax. We can avoid that by making sure that we stay within the mobile money network and we sensitize people that let's use by money so that we discourage this issue of going to withdraw it and then you meet the charges. The second issue is about infrastructure uh, to provide these services. It remains high, mainly because of two big companies, the regional companies that provide us with mobile money, MTL and Airtel. And now you have to enter into what they call agreement, bilateral agreements, agreements between, say, two parties. And when they sign those agreements, they agree on charges which they transfer to us, the users, the consumers. So what the central bank is doing is to put in a centralized system. I will explain it more. We are trying to, to, to implement what they call a uh, the denomination structure. Uh, just very quickly, Part of what a central bank is supposed to offer all of us in cash transactions is the convenience of denomination breakdown that reflects the level of transaction. So if you're buying goods and services in the region of one to two thousand, well, you should have points. If you're buying at higher levels or higher values of transactions, then you should have the, the notes and the larger ones. So it is our duty to provide this economy with currency from one shilling to 50,000. So that what people need at a point in time is what they get. Now, along the way, obviously some of the denominations, the lower ones, are less uh, practical transactionally because the, the pricing has shifted largely beyond them. So you will generally not see one, two, five, ten, and increasing with 50 in circulation, but where it's needed, we supply it. Because we do not want to create a structural absence of denominations to facilitate transactions. So 50 shillings is legal tender. Use it when you need it. It's available. And where you need others, they are also available. I appreciate that uh, you know some we hear the public saying that they're small, you know, they get lost and all those things. But they do serve a purpose and our weight reduced, we still get demand for it from some of the commercial banks. So I the people's representatives. Bank of Uganda does not represent anybody. Right? At least as far as the law making is concerned. We only implement the laws that have been 
passed by parliament, right, and ascended to by the president. The, pre the parliament passed that law, ascended by the president. We therefore have to respect the wishes of the people of Uganda. Now, what is the effect of that on our operations? Yes, you heard the World Bank statement recently that they were suspending aid. They were suspending new loans to Uganda until certain issues have been made clear. And as a result of that, our currency kind of like depreciated. It was about 3,680 shillings per dollar at the time of the announcement. It depreciated to about 3,760 after the announcement. So in terms of the impact, that announcement that's related to the Anti-Homosexuality Act, the announcement of the World Bank that they were not going to give us anything, kind of like affected the currency. But through our policy tools, we are trying to stabilize the currency. So that's how inflation. And like I said in my presentation, we have been able to lower inflation from the high of 10.7% in October last year to now 2.7%. And we have done it through squeezing money, right? But we cannot, as a central bank, continue doing that. There's a limit to which you can do that. So government is aware that they now need to trigger the supply side of the economy to raise output. How do you trigger the supply side of the economy? We've had discussions with government on this, and government has correctly said, look, we're trying to use the PDM, we're trying to use a Nioga and water bill. So that when you benefit from the PGM, how are you yourself using that money to increase production? Like the lady here said, that when you're given money for particular activities, are you going to marry a second wife or are you are really going to use the money for the activity intended? So I think government is working on the supply side through a number of initiatives. They are also supporting uh, small, medium enterprises through the Uganda Development Bank, the Microfinance Support Center, and what have you. So they are working to trigger the supply side of the economy so that we don't rely on demand management through monetary policy by squeezing money. We, we are of the view that we have not lowered inflation to where it should actually be. So now the supply side should take over to sustain inflation uh, where we have reached. Now the currency. Um, I know you. I don't know what is the share of the sovereign pound per dollar. Does anybody know? I must confess I don't know the exchange rate of South Sudan to the dollar. Okay. But I think what you need to ask yourself is that how is that exchange rate changing over a year? All right? I gave you an example of the Uganda shilling. The Uganda shilling appreciated by 2.4% over the last one year. So it means that the same value of Uganda currency that you needed to use for buying one dollar Right, you will now require fewer Uganda shillings to buy the same dollar. The question I'm asking for you is how many French pounds do you need? Did you need to buy a dollar last year compared to how many French pounds do you need to buy a dollar this year? I want to believe, unless I'm wrong, that you require more South French pounds to buy a dollar now. Well, right in Uganda, you require fewer Uganda shillings to buy the same dollar. So that simple analysis shows that the Uganda currency is gaining on the dollar compared to the sovereign pound that is losing on the dollar. If my understanding is correct, I want. We were given this facility which we have, the technical center. 
But we were told or promised that within a short time you are going to, to make us be sure that this center will not go away. That's the time when it was established. Now, it is now three years, the technical center is there, but our problem is that we would like to be sure that the center will not go away by the way of you now making a permanent construction of a Bank of Uganda building here. So as you may be aware, Lira is studying Uganda in terms of revenue generation. Kampala beats us, Mbara beats us, but we are studying in Uganda. And yet, you have established Bank of Uganda centers in all these other cities, Gulo, Arua, Gombale, where I think we are saying it's a high time. We also be sure that what you have brought us is not going to go away. You are going to make sure that the technical theater does not go away so that a permanent construction of your theater must be in layer. So we want to hear from you.